What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. I have had the unlocked European Galaxy Note for just about one month now. With it coming out on AT&T in just a few weeks, that would be a great time to revisit the Note, talk about what my experience has been with it uh, over one month, and see whether or not it's going to be a good device for you uh, as you look to decide what you want to carry in your pocket for the next two years. Especially those of you that are looking to pick one up uh, on AT&T and I believe the 19th. So if you're interested in the Galaxy Note, curious about giant phones, or just want to hear me ramble about it, stick around. Alright, so at first the Galaxy Note is a bit of an anomaly. It's got this giant 5.3 inch AMOLED screen, it's got a resolution of 1280 by 800, and in all honesty it looks silly when you go ahead and make a phone call. I recognize that. Um, so I got this guy a month ago to review before the AT&T announcement at CES, mostly because I was really curious. I saw it when it was announced at IFA in Berlin, which is the trade show uh, that happened uh, in Berlin. And I really just wanted to try it. Um, so we got the unlocked version. So it does not have LTE support like AT&T's will. It says support for HSPA+. And I planned on going back to using uh, my HTC Titan after I tested this. And generally, my testing process takes five, six days. Sometimes it'll extend out a little bit longer depending on how much time I have. And once I started using this, I really couldn't stop using it. Uh, and I've kept using it really ever since. This has been my daily driver. Um, you can see my little dog, Lucy, there. Uh, I love the Galaxy Note. It's going to be really, really difficult for me to switch to any phone. Uh, and I say that having tested pretty much every phone out there. Um, so I've become a bit desens desensitized, I guess, uh, to phones. You know, very little uh, can excite me or get me super you know, jazzed up about a phone. Uh, the Galaxy Note, though, has done that. I've really absolutely loved it. The screen size is incredible. And it's one of those things where you look on paper and you say, there's no way I can carry a 5.3-inch device with me. It is impossible. No way I can do it. Uh, you totally can. I don't even notice it anymore. It feels like a normal phone to me. The only time I'm cognizant that it's so large is when I take it out to do something with it. Which, yeah, go ahead and make your jokes. Uh, and I get strange looks from people that are like, what is that? Uh, out of all the phones I've tested, I've never had more people come up to me asking me about my phone than with the Galaxy Note. Uh, it is pocketable. I've done this on camera before. You can see, boom, in normal dude jeans, it's pocketable goes ahead and fits right in there just like any other phone would without making even a giant, um, you know, <laughs> bulge in my pants, uh, so to speak. So yes, you can pocket it. Don't have to worry. That was my big concern. Uh, extremely thin. Where the Galaxy Note has impressed me the most is in its battery. Let me go ahead and peel off this back here. And it's a plastic back that just comes off. Uh, the AT&T version, the back looks a little bit different. Uh, it's not that sort of shiny. It's got a bit of a texture to it. Um, but it is, you know, the same deal. A little very thin, uh, flimsy plastic. So it's got a 2600 milliamp hour battery here. And you, first you think, that is a giant battery. It's double what most phones, you know, close to double what most phones have. But look at the size of the screen that this thing is powering. Uh, when I first started using the Note, the phone was, you know, dying towards the end of the day. Like most phones, it really wasn't a very impressive battery. Uh, but after about a week in using it, and perhaps as my use of it started to regulate and use it as a regular phone, uh, I generally have 50% or more battery life by the time... I go to bed at night and I take it off the charger around 7 a.m. Uh, and I plug it in around midnight. So it's a really full day with a ton of emails coming in. I use this for web browsing. I fit this thing really hard. And there's the biggest testament uh, to the battery in this. While I was at CES, and if you've ever been to CES, uh, it's a complete drain on cell batteries, on cell power. Everybody's trying to use phones. So it's constantly looking for networks and generally... You know, phones don't last very long. I was able to get through an entire CES day with this phone. Battery life is incredible uh, with the Galaxy Note. Absolutely incredible. If you're a heavy business user, uh, if you're a heavy phone user and you always find yourself replacing batteries, you want something that can just get you through a day, uh, Galaxy Note is really going to be it. Um, I'm not that much of a spec guy. That's less important to me. Um, what's most important to me is user experience. And in Android in the past, those two haven't always gone hand in hand. Generally, you've needed the beefiest specs to get the best Android experience uh, out there. Uh, and perhaps that's still true. Um, but with the Galaxy Note, and you know, it's dual core, the 1.4 gigabits processor, um, it's been incredibly enjoyable using Android. It's, it's the best Android experience I have ever had 
uh, on any Android phone that I've tested. Um, you know, got some custom unlock stuff here, but it's just really worked out nicely. Even with TouchWiz, I haven't done anything else to it. It's not rooted. It doesn't have an alpha build of cyanogen on it, or it's not running uh, ice cream sandwich. This is sort of stock gingerbread or whatever Samsung says stock uh, with TouchWiz on it, and it's been awesome. I've loved having the phone. Uh, and again, it's going to be really hard for me to switch to anything else. Interestingly enough, too, uh, this guy has HSPA Plus support on it. Um, it's been the fastest HSPA Plus device I've ever tested. Let me actually do a speed test here live on camera. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi. Go ahead and do that. So Wi-Fi is turned off here. Uh, generally, an HSPA Plus you know, on most phones, maybe I'm lucky to get two you know, on a good day. Um, we'll see if this behaves on camera. But Wi-Fi has been turned off. I'm going to go ahead and begin test, uh, and we'll see. But I'm seeing speeds on occasion with HSPA Plus in the 5 to 6 megabits per second down, uh, which certainly is slower than what it's theoretically capable of, but is faster than any HSPA Plus I've ever tested uh, here in Southern California. And it looks like for one of the very few times things are behaving on camera. Uh, the up, not overly fast, but, you know, we got almost 5 there, 4.6 down. This is incredibly fast, which makes me even more excited about LTE. I'm curious what the battery is going to be on the LTE version that AT&T puts out and hopefully we'll still be able to get that same battery life but knowing that I've got almost a 40 to 50 percent buffer in battery um, is very happy and makes me happy. It's very happy. It makes me happy to know that we got that much battery life um, out of this phone and hopefully with LTE you'll still be able to get that full day. So 0.65 up. But the moral is the phone has been really fast on HSPA+. Plus. I've got you know the default task manager here, and I can go ahead and I can see my apps that I've got running, and again you know, I can close them. But I, I haven't had a need to. Um, it's just worked really well, and it's been an absolute pleasure to use. Um, what's awesome with the two, and what I use it a lot for, and I'll show you right here. It's sort of an informal video. A uh, web browsing is great on it. I haven't been the biggest fan of super high resolution screens in the past because text and font gets so very small and it's hard to read anything. It's super crisp, uh, but hard to read. And that's why I was originally drawn to a device like the HTC Titan because it was lower resolution, giant screens, that things look bigger. Uh, on a device here, which I know it's backlit, probably been a hard time seeing, you can see so much content on the screen. And because the screen's so big, and despite the high resolution, stuff still looks big on it, uh, which has been really, really, really nice. Um, web browsing on this is an absolute breeze, and having the option to do Flash, um, you know, when relevant, because there's still a lot of mobile Flash content out there, and Flash content out there, things so probably transition away from it, uh, has been awesome. I'm zero complaints with the web browsing. The camera has been average-ish. You know, it's not great. I haven't really watched many movies um, on here, but, you know, I assume if I wanted to, you know, I could. One thing that I have not used at all is this S Pen. I've had very little use for it, um, but I am not graphically inclined. For those of us that are graphically inclined, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go and run into gallery here. Well, we were at CES, our very own John Quatch. Um, I was showing him the phone and showing him that it had S Pen capabilities. He went and having never touched this phone before, having never used the S Pen or its wake up capabilities, because it's not a necessarily a capacitive stylus. It's not a normal stylus that sort of uses a resistive touchscreen. It uses pressure and all kinds of different business to, um, to write. Uh, John Quatch drew a picture of uh, one of the gentlemen that was sitting with us at the booth uh, at CES without ever touching the phone. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with the S Pen. You can take screen captures of it with holding down the button and annotate right on them. Um, just because it hasn't been useful for me doesn't mean it might not be useful for you. Uh, the AT&T version is not going to have this one giant button. It's going to have four buttons across the bottom. Uh, I love having that one big button. It's nice having the capacitor button sort of fade into the background. I know I can be a bit... Um, hypocritical about that. Sometimes I don't like the capacitive buttons that you can't see. I've really liked it here. I don't know why. Maybe it's a testament just to the phone itself. Um, but this is probably, and the reason I gave it actually an Editor's Choice Award at CES, because I was actually using it um, the whole time. This is hands down my favorite phone of the year. And let's say because it's, we're only a month, you know, two months, about a month into 2012. I'd probably say this is my favorite. I got this phone in 2011. Just about 2000. I think I'd say 2011. This is my favorite phone of 2011. I don't know if I actually got it in the year 2011. But uh, hands down, my favorite phone of the past 12 months at least. So if you're looking to get a phone, 
uh, and you're looking to maybe make a switch or you're not on AT&T or you want to get the unlocked version, um, this is a great phone to get. Uh, we got this from our friends at Negri Electronics. You can buy it from any unlocked um, retailer out there. You know, certainly you're paying a premium if you get the unlocked version. Uh, you will get HSPA Plus capabilities and you want to sign a contract, but you're not going to get LTE. So recommendation, you know, wait till we get the review unit for AT&T and see if LTE makes a difference, see what the effect is on battery life. But uh, I love the Galaxy Note. It gets a John Rettinger high five and a John Rettinger kiss on the cheek. Galaxy Note has been awesome. Totally recommended it. Uh, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Be sure to check us out, too, for all your tech news, unboxings, reviews, ramblings, month-laters, and stuff like this. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.